Hello, good morning. I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some of the research I've been doing for a few years. It's about extracting um, information from imperfect data. So I'll, I'll try to sort of motivate the problem and uh, try to get through the 50 slides I have. So, all right. so um, um, we know that the recent growth of um, AI and ML technologies is, is, um, is unprecedented. In fact, um, this has given rise to enormous transformations in how uh, people make decisions. Um, for example, deep learning and other techniques um, are now almost routinely used in, in, uh, in a lot of the uh, um, uh, machine learning algorithms. Um, so, uh, but what we, have, what we must realize is that the practical utility and the effectiveness of, of almost all these algorithms depend on how well we can actually learn the parameters. Um, and these parameters are learned from training data. Right? So that's the, the first thing. Uh, so uh, the problem, of course, is that the representative statistical um, training data are often unavailable. Um, so, uh, for example, um, there are reasons for that. One is cost, could be in terms of time or effort for getting adequate data, or it's difficult to getting data for infrequent, infrequent events, rare events, or um, as in sometimes you are not given the data because of security and privacy concerns, right? In, in medical data, for example. Um, so. And uh, another thing is data imperfections are pervasive in real-world data, um, although you may not realize this, uh, the, the, the data sets that, you are, that are available to you are already cleaned. Um, or sometimes the data is, um, you, only, you are only given the clean data, right? Um, um, so, so you have in, in, in true data sets, you have missing data and ambiguous data and, 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 and things like that. So the question is how do we proceed with such dirty data and actually extract information. So I'll, 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 um, um, one of the strategies you know, might think is, is okay, let's, let's just uh, use only the clean data, right? So any, any dirty data records that you have, you just throw it out and, and try to learn the parameters from, uh, from dirty data. So I'm going to claim here that that particular procedure is inherently flawed. Um, the, the, so here we have a very simple example of seven data records. And each data record has three attributes, A, B, and C. And let's assume that A, B, and C can take two values. So A can take A1 and A2, A1 and A2, and um, B can take B1 and B2, and so on and so forth. So if, if this, is the, this is the set of seven data records, and, and these squares indicate missing values, missing data that is not provided to you. So from this, you can actually figure out, you can estimate the, uh, the probability of A1, B1, and C1 occurring. So there's the, the, the problem being that you don't have these data, you cannot actually um, figure out the exact probability, what you can get is probabilities upper and lower bounds. So if you do this for this particular data set, believe me, you get between one seventh and three seventh. Those are the values you get, right? So I, I don't care what values you put to or put inside the squares, you, you should get a value between one seventh and three seventh. There's no way you can get out of that. Um, so if you pick one value, from 1 7th and 3 7th, you are essentially picking one imputation strategy. That's essentially what you're doing. On the other hand, if you ignore the dirty records, in this particular case, uh, there are only two clean records, I think these two. You can see the probability of A1, B1, C1 is half. And half is outside that interval, right? So, so it's, this is 1 7th and 3 7th, half is outside. So, which basically means no imputation strategy can give you this, give this value. So, this, this very simple example illustrates that ignoring dirty data records is, is inherently flawed and you, you cannot use that. Right? So, so simply ignoring the dirty data records and learning the parameters from clean records is, is, uh, is not right. You get, you get wrong results. So next one, here we go. So it, um, the, the other strategy is of course use the imputation model, so, uh, which is sometimes referred to as a missingness model. So if data missingness, um, if a model is available, you can use this model to actually fill in the missing data uh, or, or correct the wrong data. Um, but usually the, uh, the problem is there's inadequate information to justify the assumption that you, uh, to, to arrive at a missingness model, right? Um, so, so what we need are models that make little or no unjustifiable assumptions and are better equipped to capture other types of data. Why do we need other types of data? Because when you, when you don't have enough information, you want to get information, get um, um, information from all types of data that are available, in particular human generated soft data. So for example, if an expert makes a statement regarding, I am 80% certain that uh, regimen A works, then you want to be able to model that. that I, I claim that this is difficult to, uh, you can, uh, it is difficult to model this using probability models. 
Number two, uh, nuances in natural language statements. If somebody says, I don't think regimen B would work on a particular patient, how do you model that? Right? So these are natural language statements where modeling is not easy. Um, imperfect implications. For example, you can have implication, I mean, people use rules all the time. So if you have imperfect implications, it's, um, it's not possible. For example, smoking implies blood pressure. There's an imperfection here. So how do you use that? So that's basically the research that I'm doing. Thank you.